No, today I am not Lindsay Ann. I am your editing fairy godmother. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Now you're the YouTube Cinderella. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Lindsay Ann and today I am back with a brand new video. So today, this video is for all you teens, tweens out there who want to start YouTube over quarantine. Or not even teens and tweens, like you could be like a 90 year old grandpa and I promise this video is gonna be helpful, okay? But I'm not gonna just tell you how to edit those like simple YouTube videos, you know? I'm gonna make you trendy. This video is gonna make you blow up on YouTube. This video has all the secrets on how to be a trendy teen on YouTube. <coughs> so we have a lot to get through. I'll be putting timestamps in the description box so you can just skip around if you want, but let's just get started. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is just editing software. The two main types of editing software you can use is either Final Cut Pro or iMovie. iMovie is free on all Apple products. The thing with iMovie though, it's like very basic functions and I just feel like the Final Cut Pro is a lot more efficient at getting things done than iMovie is. But the thing with Final Cut Pro is that it is $300 so it's definitely a really really big investment. What I would suggest is to get the Final Cut Pro 90 day free trial and just like test it out. Like I used iMovie for like the first two years that I did YouTube and it was fine. Like I was able to like upload videos etc etc but Final Cut Pro is where all the trendy teens are you know and we're all about being trendy but don't forget who you're talking to you are talking to the queen of free trials okay i haven't paid for netflix hulu spotify premium apple music in about five years not working smart not working hard guys so my hack for getting multiple free trials of the Final Cut is just if you just go on your computer and you create another user on your computer and download Final Cut Pro on that other user, the website won't recognize that it's the same computer. So it'll just let you download the Final Cut Pro again. So you can literally just create as many users as you want and just keep repeating the 90 day trial. And that's how you become famous on a budget, guys. Don't hate the player, hate the game. So the next thing I wanna talk about is my workflow and how I start editing. So I film on my Canon G7X Mark II and basically what I just do is after I film a video, I say, all right, I think that's it for me today. I'll see you guys later, bye. Oh, and I do that. And I just take the SD card and I put it in this SD converter. I'll link it down below, it's from Amazon. And I just plug this into my computer and, and that's what lets me import the footage onto my computer. So that's how I import footage. So how to start an actual project or video on Final Cut Pro, you need to start a library first. So you just basically open Final Cut Pro, you press file and then you start a library. And in that library, you start a new project and that project is gonna be like where you're gonna be working on and that's gonna be your video. And then you can drag all the clips down to like your working bar and you can just start making a rough cut. So a rough cut is basically just like an outline of what your video is going to be. It's where you like cut out the unnecessary parts. Maybe you're just saying the same thing over again for like 20 minutes straight, but just not able to get it in the right tone that you want. Can't relate or anything. So now let's talk about Final Cut Pro basics. So the basics were actually kind of hard to like figure out just because like there's so many different functions on Final Cut Pro. So it was a little confusing at first. I only basically use four main functions on Final Cut Pro. And the first is blade, delete, undo, and redo. And that's it. I think that those are like the only four functions that you really need. But what you need to do is to customize your keyboard. In Best Dress video on how she edits, she explains how to customize a keyboard. So I'll just link it down below. So I just like, don't waste your time, you know? But a customizing keyboard is really, really important just because it's so much easier just like clicking a key on your computer than searching up for that function. So definitely do that. So let's just quickly talk about what like the small icons in Final Cut Pro means. So in like the middle, like the right hand side, the first thing, it's like the... I don't really know how to explain it, but it looks like that, right? And that basically just allows you to like skim over the clips. It'll have a red bar that lets you just like skim over the clip. It's really good because without it, you have to like jump to different parts and you can't skim. Think of it like a scrubbing tool. I don't really know what the headphone is. I just ignore it. But the next thing is really useful. It's the snapping tool. So I think like the snapping tool is like autocorrect. When you have it on, it allows you just to like snap the clip in place. When you don't have it on, it's like really flexible and like it like the clip like doesn't necessarily snap into place. It's really useful for like text, getting everything to like start at the same second. And then you have the zoom feature. Like if you want to zoom in on a specific detail you want to edit, you can zoom in and you can like edit that. And then 
then the next thing is just the effects tab i'll talk about that later and then the last thing we have is transitions which i'll also talk about later so those are basically like what the icons mean on the right hand side and like with the four functions i use in like those icons that's basically just how like i make a rough cut of my video okay let's quickly talk about music because music on youtube it's actually so freaking complicated. The websites that I recommend, the first is definitely thematic. The thematic is awesome because not only was it started by the icon herself, Michelle Fawn, but it's because it's completely free. It has actually good music and it's copyright free. So you can use it all in your YouTube videos. So thematic is basically this like uh, platform that's dedicated to giving creators copyright free music. And what I love about thematic is that it's actually good music. Like it's not like that weird techno vibe music that you find on YouTube or something that says like copyright free. It's like good trendy music that hip with the kids, you know, like you got lo-fi, you even got K-pop, you got rap, like it's some good music. You guys should definitely check it out. I really like the website. So thematic is always my go-to music source just because it's super safe. Like, you know, you definitely won't get copyrighted when you use that music. The second platform you can look at is SoundCloud. And you know, SoundCloud is definitely trendy. Like everyone does SoundCloud, the hip kids, the alt kids, whatever. SoundCloud. But the problem with SoundCloud is that like you have to first ask the artist for permission to use it in your videos and, and sometimes like they don't respond or they take a really long time to respond. And the second barrier is that like even if you have the permission, I found that I sometimes still get copyrighted just because like the company that they work with like automatically flags videos that uses their music. So even if you did get permission, you could still get copyrighted, but they would just have to go in and manually remove the copyright, which just it's like a whole process, you know, it's just like not that efficient. And then there's also YouTube audio library. So that is also meant for creators for copyright free music, everything on there you can use. But the quality of the music is just subpar. Okay, subpar to say the least. Like you guys can check it out. I'm sure you can find some decent music on there, but it's like, I'll just play a few clips of the music. Let's enjoy these blissful sounds to our ears. Now let's talk about color correcting. So color correcting can be really, really useful at times, but I don't do it too much on my videos just because, you know, like if you have like a good camera, you don't really need to color correct that often. And I don't really edit with like filters or anything. So if you guys want the filtry like vibe, there's so many videos on YouTube that talks about how to get like a cool, like aesthetic filter over your videos. But if you guys just want some basic color correcting, you basically just press this button on Final Cut Pro and you can change like the color, saturation, exposure. There's so many videos on YouTube that go super in depth on these but the basically what i use is i either use exposure so i turn up like the highlights and the midtones and sometimes i use saturation to increase the saturation on the midtones and highlights i don't really touch the shadows i just think that that's like it makes the video kind of weird like look kind of weird so, so i really only mess with like the highlights and midtones it's just like useful maybe you're in like a really dark background or something you can just like turn up the highlights just think of it as like editing like an Instagram photo or something. You really just have to like play around with it to see like what works for you. So yeah, so that option's there for you guys if you guys wanna like color correct your videos. So now let's get to the fun part and talk about what actually makes a video go from here to here. What makes a video trend, you guys? And that is like the visual effects. So let's just go back to the effects tab. I'm just gonna walk you through some of like the most popular effects and some of my favorites that you can use. A lot of YouTubers use fish eye for that like meme look, you know, because when they're just so quirky, you gotta use a fish eye. There's a lot in distortion that you can use, like a uh, fun house, heat. Heat is, you know, when you're like being quirky and meme like. Basically like distortion is just all for like the quirky girls. And then there's also like underwater and wave. And you can also just apply these to text. And then I really like masks actually. Like I really like the shape mask because you can like make your videos really aesthetic by putting on like a shape mask and making it look like a TV or something like an old TV. And I used to do that a lot in my videos. Also the last thing is just stylize. The stylize has also a lot of really cool effects. Like aged film gets you that like vintage filmy vibe. Bad TV is also really cool. It makes your screen glitch and stuff. It's really cool for like aesthetic intros, outros. Um, you can even use it for like transitions, you know, like if you just like make like the, the ends and beginning of a clip glitch a little, it's kind of like a transition. And then there's also camcorder. It just puts like a camcorder overlay um, over your screen. Uh, and then there's a sensor, like maybe you have a nip slip or you're just doing this, you know? Like, am I holding up my middle finger or am I just holding up my pinky? You will never know. Um, and then there's also film grain. 
that also goes for like a film grainy effect you know like these names are pretty self-explanatory you can just like explore this yourself and you'll definitely get it so those are like the main effects i use in the effects tab and another trendy youtube popular thing is zooming in and zooming out of clips this actually took me so long to understand at first but I think I kind of got it. So whenever you like want the zoom to begin, you need to like lock it in place. So like, let's just say I want to like start zooming in on this clip. I have to go to like the general overview tab and just like lock it and like press the yellow buttons over here for both position and scale. And then whenever I want like the zoom to end, I just go to like that place in the clip and then I just like scale it and position it however I want. And then okay. it will basically just like zoom in the video, you feel? For example, if you just want to zoom into my face because I'm just so quirky and beautiful. And then lastly for visual effects, a really useful thing you can do is just download cool clips on YouTube. Like there's like glitch effects, static TV, VHS tapes. Like if you just like search in any of these, you can just download it from YouTube. If you just type into Google YouTube to MP3 and just paste in the URL. But the thing that you have to do is you have to make an mp4 file so there's like a little tab that says mp4 so you just have to press mp4 so you make sure that it's actually a video and not just sound um so yeah so that's how you like download videos off of youtube and you know with this you can get as quirky as trendy as you want you can download memes you can download tiktoks i personally just am not hip with the kids so i don't know like what vines to download or like what sound you know like get as like creative as you want with this this is honestly where like individuality comes and you can make your own like editing skills and branch out from here there are also like a bunch of youtube videos that has like free editing overlays like if you just like search that in in the youtube search bar there's so many like videos that people make that are specifically designed for you to download and like use their overlays Okay, now let's talk about sound effects. Sound effects are where like, I struggled quite a bit when I first started YouTube because you know, like when you're watching a video, you don't really notice the sound effects. So you're just kind of like used to it. But the main sound effects that people use is first is mouse click and the next is keyboard. So you can just find those effects on YouTube and you just search up like mouse click effect or like keyboard effect or something like that just basically like whatever sound that you want to use just try to describe it as closely as you can and then you can just use the same website that youtube to mp3 and download it and then you'll have an audio file of that video so those are the sound effects that i download from youtube but you can also use the sound effects from that final cut pro has like if you just go into their sound effects tab they have so many already um like they have like typewriter which is common oh like children cheering or children booming so you can use those. I don't really use those too much though. Also, there's so many videos on YouTube that talks about like 50 popular sound effects that YouTubers use or something like that. So just like watch those videos. And lastly for sound effects, just like how Final Cut Pro has visual effects, they also can distort your sound. Um, so, you know, you can use like a monster for when you want your voice to be really low. You can like make your voice echo. You can make your voice muffled. You can make your voice really, really high. Like these things that you, you just kind of have to like explore yourselves. Like the options are there for you. It's there when you download Final Cut Pro. So do some exploration, kids. And then let's talk about how I do my overlays. So I got a lot of questions on my aesthetics video on how I did like the Instagram overlays, the computer overlays, and I use Pixar. So basically what you do on Pixar is you just download the app and you have to make sure that it's a PNG and a PNG basically just means it has like a transparent background. You have to go to background and click like the transparent one and then just go into stickers. Like Pixar has so many different types of stickers. Um, I like typing in like computer aesthetic or something. Like they have really, really cool like um, computer aesthetic things or even just like vintage tvs that you can do as an overlay another thing i do is i just like go online and then i just like download a bunch of colors which is really useful because you can have it as like a background whenever you want it's just like all in the folder for you and whenever you want like a pink background or something you just like drag the color there and one last thing for overlays definitely something that like aesthetic youtubers do to like promote your own instagram you just screen record on your phone like your instagram profile and then just upload that on to Final Cut Pro. 
And then we have animations. And animations are literally so fun to create. I make my animations on my iPad and I downloaded Procreate. And I think that that's just like a really easy app. But there's also like a lot of free apps that just allows you to do the same thing. But on Procreate, if I like write something, um, I'll just add another layer over it and trace over it and not making it too perfect just so like there's like movement. And so now you have like those two layers. And then I just go on Final Cut Pro, I zoom in and I just like start cutting it and like repeating the same three clips. So it looks like a video, right? It looks like an animation. Okay, now let's talk about transitions. Yeah, I just like don't use transitions. I just use like normal jump cuts that like Final Cut already has. But there's also like really cool transitions that you can do, like I said, with like the effects tab. For example, like the bad TV glitch. Like you guys probably have seen a lot of YouTubers use like a TV beep or a TV static or something as like a transition. So let's talk about adding text to your videos. So like I said, you can either draw on it with on your iPad and upload that as text, but you can also use a lot of the Final Cut Pro has a lot of options. I have always just used basic title and you can just play with like the fonts and stuff that you want. But there's also like typewriter, I think it's called, which basically it, it types out the words instead of just putting it all there at once. Final Cut Pro comes with like a bunch of fonts, but if you guys like want more fonts, I use dafont, dafont.com and they have so many different types of fonts. Funny story actually. So one of my favorite YouTubers ever, Moya, if you're watching this, hello, I love you. Um, I like watched her videos and she was using like the coolest font ever. And I really wanted to use it for like my English project. I was still like in school at the time. And so I literally like DM'd her on Instagram. Like, hey, like I love your videos. Like what fonts do you use? It's such a random question. But um, yeah, so she told me she used Mermaid and Royal Acid. And I was like, sweet, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so that was my first interaction with her. I'll list over here some fonts that I use personally, but you can go online and there's so many videos, like if you just type in like aesthetic fonts, they'll just show you like a bunch of really cool font options that you can download. Of course, Comic Sans is superior. Installing the fonts is like a little bit complicated at first, but I'll link a couple of videos that explains it. Like once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Get excited kids because now we're gonna talk about how to make your videos aesthetic. This is honestly just like where you have to be creative. Like creativity, you either have it or you don't. I mean, no, okay. Not necessarily. I think creativity can be made, okay? Obviously I use a bunch of like overlays, Pixar, et cetera, et cetera, to make my videos aesthetic, right? One thing that makes your video aesthetic is if you line up the clips of your footage to the audio, like to the music, you know? Especially for intros and everything. Like if you have something that's like really, really fast, like that has like a beat to like, oof, 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 ch, ch, ch. Like if you just line up your clips to that fire beat, then it'll like, flow a lot better and just have like a better viewing experience but i also like to trim like the size of my clips like i did this for my aesthetics video to just like make it more aesthetic and uh, instead of having like a wide screen you can have just you can just, like trim the size of your clips and just have like a square you know so that's cool honestly the only reason i did that for that video is because the sides of my room were so dirty and we ain't about to expose me like that so i just trimmed it you can also overlay multiple videos this is what i did for my pleated skirt video i honestly thought that that was pretty cool not gonna lie so i just did like a solid color background for it like purple or something like that right and then i put like the outline Outfit as another clip and then I put like a earring shot and I had like a shoe shot so If you like overlay multiple videos on top, I think that that could have like a really cool effect And yeah, it's really just about personalization and individuality guys I would honestly recommend just working on your intros I think that since like your intros is like the first few seconds that viewers watch you Having catchy intros is really important just to keep like the viewers attention, you know the one thing I would caution against is don't over edit. Like sometimes when you just have so many jump cuts or so many like effects, transitions, like right, like one after another after another, it can be like a little bit too much. Um, so yeah, so just like don't go overboard. But put some like spice, chili powder, garlic powder on, you know, some clips of your videos. And that's really just like what makes like videos entertaining and stuff. But yeah, so there's definitely a lot of information, but I really hope that I was helpful. And if I was, please like and subscribe. That would help me so much. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for me today. Your fairy godmother has got to rest. But as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.